You want to walk like a German? Hello there! Welcome back to the Virtual Fechtschule. My name is Oscar, and today will be the first in a video series on footwork. Now, since the start of the pandemic, uh, footwork has been a hot topic because for a lot of people, uh, that's pretty much all we can do right now. So what I'd like to do here is give you a very brief overview of the type of footwork that you can see in German fight books from between 1450 and 1540, roughly. Now, it's mostly going to be Lekuchner, but I'll be picking a couple of other sources as well that are interesting in this regard. Now, in this first video, I'd like to give a couple of theoretical observations, and in the next one that I'll be bringing out a week later, roughly, I'll be showing you some of the footwork in practice. So, what is up with those Lekuchner stances? Why do they stretch their legs out like that? Well, imagine you're wearing medieval flat-soled leather shoes. Like that, yeah. And then imagine that you want to have a really wide stance. And that you want to get a lot of reach as well. And that you finally also want to get some height, because um, that's what tends to happen in a bind with a messer with a one-handed weapon, or when you try to get a high stance in general. Now, you can tell that because it is this uh, medieval footwear and the, um, the type of other things that you want from these stances, you tend to naturally gravitate towards a slightly uh, stretched out stance like this. Still, the illustrations might be a bit exaggerated, but at least we know now where it could come from. But the million dollar question though is, why would you want to do such a thing? Why try and copy these stances? Well, for funsies, for instance, or for um, bragging rights in the Messer Guild. But I think there's also another reason. And that reason is, modern footwear is really awesome. Modern shoes are really a lot better at being shoes than medieval ones. Um, for various reasons, design and materials among others. So you can do all kinds of cool things in them that you can't do on medieval shoes, like making really deep lunges. Yeah. However, there's also a risk involved, because um, these modern shoes will also allow you to compensate for bad structure or footwork habits, up to the point that they don't, and that's when injuries happen. So I think that it's usually a good idea, if you are in any way able to, sometimes just take off your modern shoes and practice some of this footwork um, on bare feet or with minimalistic shoes or something of the sort. That will really give you a different understanding of how these things were meant to work back in the day and what you can take from that to improve your structure and your footwork, even if you put your modern shoes back on and start to kick ass with those again. Now the second thing I need to talk about is the ball of foot type of footwork. Now, there's a lot of discussion about uh, whether people in the medieval period would walk on the ball of foot or whether they would be heel striking in their uh, daily comings and goings. Now, the, a really good argument that was put forth by someone I trust in this is that, hey, the archaeological record shows that souls have wear patterns that indicate heel striking. And I think that is a pretty solid argument. However, I'm not sure if that's convincing when it comes to fencing. Because if I go to the supermarket, I also won't suddenly start using modern Olympic uh, fencing footwork to get there. No, I'll just walk. And I think that even though in the medieval period people in their normal um, comings and goings would just use heel striking uh, to walk, I think that ball of foot type of footwork makes a lot more sense when you fence. If you want to have these wide stances, it's really easier to just touch down with the ball of your foot first. And it makes a lot of sense for the turning as well, to do those on the ball of your foot. Now, the final question I'd like to address is, hey, can you use this in combination with other types of footwork, like for instance, modern Olympic fencing? And as far as I'm concerned, the answer is, hell yeah, go for it. Um, I really enjoy uh, using lunges that um, you wouldn't be able to do on those leather shoes, but if I wear my modern shoes, I can do forward lunges and I use them quite happily. So you can take bits of this and add this to your repertoire if you're practicing in another footwork system already. And it might be interesting to add a variation, for instance. It is important to keep in mind, though, that there is a couple of differences with this system, and most of them come from the fact that they were designed to be used on these medieval flat-soled shoes. So one of the differences, for instance, is why you would do footwork. 
like the most obvious reason is of course distance management and if we look at that more closely an obvious reason is to make sure that you get the reach to be able to attack someone and then retreat to a safe distance again now if you look at Lekuner and some of the other sources that I look at, yes, this happens quite a lot. But there's also another very important reason to use your footwork, and that is to get to a position of advantage. That means that you need to get to a place from where you can do a stable winding, so you can put pressure in a bind, um, do the windings without being unstable. And that usually means getting um, using your footwork to get to a position where you can do that, where you can entice someone to attack you, to wind against that, or to simply already be able to hit them with a long point or do a nachreisen of some sort. So it's much more about getting that favorable position as well, and you need to keep that in mind. Once again, this has a lot to do with the fact that um, really fast footwork, um, very forward footwork, is not just not that easy on leather soles. And finally, there's another important reason why you would use the lower half of your body in Le Cucnera, also for instance, in the Goliath manuscript where you fence with great swords, is that you really need to use your entire body to move a sword. You can't just use your arms, that will lead to injury, so you need to use the entire body, and that includes the feet as well. So that has an influence on what you do with the footwork. Now, having gotten these things out of the way, you're ready to move on into the second part, which I'll be uploading soon. And that's where I'll be showing some of the practical types of footwork that you see. Mostly Lekugner, but some other sources as well. Now, if you like this, um, let me know. So, um, if you have a question, leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And finally, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you very much. Stay safe, keep fencing, and I'll catch you in the next one.